I am Anushmita Vishwas, class 10, section A. You all know that the Platinum Jubilee of our school is getting celebrated and the geography exhibition is one of the part of it. First of all, I would like to thank our headmistress and all the geography teachers who had helped us and the other teachers and people who were in Doha. You can see the model is made up on a plywood to show the glacial flow, thermical and fabric color have been used. The whole glacial mountain is made up of cardboard. To give a more realistic effect, we have used stone chips. And the next you can see, to show the forests, we have used green colored wool and paint. In the origin, of the glacier, we have used white cotton to show the glacial ice. Then in the plain area, you can see to show the sediment water channel, we have, we have used sand and stones. And under thermocol, we have used paper and that's why it's, li it's a lightweight model. So let's know about the landforms in detail. So you will know that I'm going to talk about glacial landforms. Before saying something about the landforms created by glacier, let me tell you first how glacier is formed. You can see the glacial mountain right here. We know that glacial form on land. We know that glaciers form on land. They are made up of falling snow, which are also called snowflakes. So snowflakes get compressed into ice over many centuries and move slowly downwards because of the pull of gravity. Most of the glaciers exist in the polar region like Greenland, Canadian Arctic and Antarctica. So let's get into the landforms created by glaciers. You can see, see them right here. So first of all, in its birthplace or in its origin, you can see the pyramidal pit. It's a mountain type landform. It's sometimes called a glacial horn in extreme cases. It's an angular, sharply pointed mountain pit, which is formed by a lot of sarks, which is a type of glacial erosional landform eroded together. It's due to multiple glaciers diverging from a central point. Pyramidal peaks are often examples of nunataks. Just after this, it melts down. The next, you can see, it's Cori or Sark. You can see right here. I told just a little ago, it's a type of glacial erosion in the landform. These are deep, long and wide traps or basins with very steep concave to vertically dropping high walls at its head as well as sides. It's basically a bowl-shaped depression formed by the erosional activity of the glacier. You see, while melting down, it also forms the lateral moraine you can see right here. There are sharp crested piles of glacially transported rocks. They form only in the ablation zone of a glacier. So, okay, the next we can see it's arity or arid. The word arity or arid is a French word originated from the Latin word arista, which has three meanings. Number one is the ear of corn, number two, a fish bone, number three, a spine. An arity or arid is actually a narrow ridge of a rock which separates two valleys. Is typically formed when two glaciers erode parallel U-shaped valleys. Arids can also form when two glacial sorts erode headwards towards one another. Overall, arids are a thin, jagged crest. 
The next, we can see it forms the medial moraine. You can see right here. Medial moraines form when two tributary glaciers come together. They are generally surficial features of the ice and often consist of rock that has fallen from a rock wall where the glaciers converge. Then the glacier totally melts down and we see it forms the terminal moraine. You can see it right here. This is a type of moraine that forms at the terminal of the glacier marking its maximum advance. It creates a barrier helping to trap water in a newly formed glacial lake. And you see the next one is Drumlin. It's originated from an Irish word, Droinin, which means the littlest ridge. It was first recorded in 1833. Drumlins are the hills of sediment, which are generally a quarter of a mile or more in length. These have been streamlined by glacial flow, thus they are often elongated. They occur both together and individuals. Then, jumping to the next, is Escar, you can see right here. The word Escar is originated from the Irish word Acer, which means reach or elevation especially when separating two planes or depressed surfaces. Escar is sometimes called the serpent cave. Ridges of sediment that form in water channels beneath or within the glacial ice. The floors of these channels can be rock, sediment or ice. You see the next is Outwash Plain. It's a plain formed of glacial fluvial deposits due to meltwater outwash at the terminus of a glacier. They are expansive, so it can expand. Generally flat areas dominated by braided rivers where the glacier actively melts. And the last is the Cato Lake. You can see it right here. A Cato Lake is a hole in the outwash plain. The word kettle is originated from the Latin word calitus or catinus, which means a deep container. It's formed by retreating glaciers or draining floodwaters. The kettles are formed as a result of wax of dead ice left behind by retreating glaciers. So, I'm done. Thank you. Hope you like it.